That's right. I mean, you, yeah. You've got a baseline for your, for your landscape yeah. but, so that the peaks can kind of stand out from this baseline that presumably everybody will agree to. Yeah, yeah. But you do come up against, and you mention them, of course, both in your talk and, and in your book, the sort of standard problems with utilitarianism. I mean, I, I take it you would describe your philosophy as a, a kind of scientific utilitarianism. Yeah, it's, it's a, a kind of, uh, or more broadly speaking, consequentialism. But the reason why I don't eagerly answer to that name is that everyone thinks they know that there's, a, there's just a, an obvious stalemate between consequentialism and its rivals and that that makes sense. And uh, I think it's, it's many of the concepts and many of the distinctions in moral philosophy have prevented us from, from actually thinking about moral truth in the, co in the context of science. So I'm presenting a new argument and there are many, many aspects of my argument that, that, are, that don't track consequentialism. Um, one of the problems with consequentialism is that people don't think very imaginatively about what counts as a consequence. So you have the, the, the classic trolley problem that many of you have probably heard of. This is, this is ubiquitous now in, in, in moral philosophy and in, in neuroscientific research on morality. You have a train coming down the track and it's going to hit and kill five workmen who don't see it coming. But you stand at a switch and you can throw, throw the switch and the train will take another track and there it will only kill one workman. And so you, people are asked, you know, should you flip that switch? Now, when asked this, 95% of people say, oh, absolutely, you have to flip that switch. You, you save a net four lives. You'd be a moral monster not to, to uh, do that. But you can pose the problem another way. You now stand on a footbridge overlooking the, the trolley track. The trolley's coming down the track, and there's a suitably large person at your side who you can push into the path of the un oncoming trolley killing him, obviously, but saving a net four lives. And now, posed under this guise, 95% of people say you'd be a monster to push that fat man onto the track. Uh, now, I, I happen to think this is somewhat ill-posed because I think we all have an intuitive physics and we burn a fair amount of fuel wondering whether the fat man is really going to stop the trolley. Uh, but even if, you, even if you finesse it and, and make it clear that, that uh, uh, he will, they seem different, these situations. Now, from, a, from the, the usual consequentialist point of view, people say, well, it's the same. You, you just have body count. This is actuarially, this is the same scenario. But maybe it is, in fact, not the same. If it is just fundamentally different to push a person up close and personal to his death than to flip a switch, if, if that difference can never be uh, reformed, then, they, then they, they're not, in fact, the same. If you're going to wake up with nightmares for the rest of your life because you push someone, but feel like a hero because you flipped a switch, those are the consequences that have to be uh, built into our analysis. And, and there, there are many ways in which, which traditional, the traditional discussion of these issues uh, breaks down. Uh, so uh, that's Another that's version that. of that one is the, is the um, uh, hospital where there's one patient who needs a kidney transplant, another patient needs a heart transplant, another patient needs a lung transplant, another patient needs a liver transplant, and there are no organs available. But then the doctors notice that there's somebody in the waiting room who has a perfectly healthy one of all these things. <laughs> so you can kill one to save, to save four. And it's, it's, it's the same point, that the, the positive act of killing somebody is one that nobody warms to. And just, but just imagine if we all lived in a society where at any moment you could be sitting in your doctor's office thinking you're getting a checkup and you could be <laughs> grabbed and vivisected for the sake of others. This is, we would be, we live in constant terror. Uh, so these are the kinds of